In this week's parsha, the portion of Shoftim, the Torah begins, Shoftim v'shochim titan chov chosharecho, judges and law enforcers, you should install in every one of your communities. A judge is only qualified to rule on capital crime cases, lashes, penalties, even monetary laws, only if he's ordained through Moshe Rabbeinu. The ordination has to be directly linked to the ordination which Moshe had ordained someone and that person ordained someone else. Because the Torah, when it speaks about the court, the Torah refers to it as Elohim, people of stature, people of status. And the Gemara tells us, the Talmud tells us, people who have this credential known as smicha, but it's the ordination which directly is linked to Moshe. A court to be qualified to rule on monetary issues or penalty, a court of three such judges is sufficient. But a court, or lashes, but a court to rule on the death penalty, one must need a court of 23 judges. The judge's qualification, besides being ordained, their level of knowledge is something, the breadth and depth of the knowledge is something which we cannot relate to. They have to be proficient in all aspects of law and application of law, laws of idolatry, laws of, laws of witchcraft. Not only that, the testimony must be heard directly from the witness to the judge. It cannot come through an interpreter. They have to hear it directly themselves. That means the judges themselves have to be proficient in 70 languages to be able to understand the language of the witness if he should speak a language which most people are not aware of or fluent in or have an understanding. So we're speaking something out of the ordinary. That's the type of quality, caliber judge the Torah wants in every community. Firstly, what's considered a community? Is a community, according to one opinion, a community, if it has 120 Jews, this is a community which you're obligated to install such a court. Another opinion says it's double that number, but still, it's a very small number. And you must have a court in every one of these communities. With law enforcers, the judge may give a verdict, but who's going to enforce the law? You have law enforcers to guarantee that the law will be enforced and people would adhere to the verdict of the court. Whether it's death penalty, whether it's lashes, whether it's penalty, whether it's monetary payment. Rabbinically, the court, even if it's not people of such caliber, are able to rule on monetary laws. But on the Torah level, there's nothing outside of a judge who's ordained. What differentiates between a human being and any other living creature? or any other entity of creation that exists. The power of free choice. Every living creature, its function is purely dictated by instinct. The way God created that creature in every specific setting or certain, under certain circumstances, functions and reacts and behaves a certain way. The creature, the living species has no control over its behavior. The only living species which has control over its behavior, which is not instinctive, is the human being. The human being who is endowed with a soul, with an intellect, with the power of speech, he has the ability to go against what we're inclined to do. We're inclined to the physicality. The human being has the ability to rein in our, that physicality and not succumb to temptation. In Halachic terms, this is known as free choice. Bechira chofshis, that's what it's known as. Now, if you have in every community a court of 23, a court 
which could give lashes. Logically, rationally, any rational human being, if he's forewarned and he should violate a negative commandment, he gets lashes. Lashes means to be whipped. And there are other types of punishment, corporal punishment, which is only rabbinical. You're caned. After a person is whipped or caned, you realize he's incapacitated for an extended period of time. No one whose mind and emotion functions within a rational context will eat that small amount of meat, which is not kosher, or the species, which is not kosher, understanding the consequence of his behavior, what he's going to receive, and it's going to be enforced. So the only way he's able to violate, based on his choice, is behind closed doors. But in the open, where other Jews could see him, and they could testify that he did violate, and there was an obligation, because all Jews are responsible for one another, known as communal responsibility. So if that's the case, by God installing such a system that every community must have a court with law enforcers, seemingly this infringes and minimizes on the power of choice that the Jew no longer has the breath of choice, as you would think he should have, to choose to do as he chooses and as he pleases. So how do we understand this? We had read in last week's portion, God says, Moshe Rabbeinu communicates this to us in the name of Hashem. You're God's children. If a person would have a child and he wants his child to develop normally, healthily, is he going to allow him to behave in an area which is totally unconscionable, such as committing murder, such as stealing, such as injuring another human being. The father says, that's not for my son. That, although if he should choose to do so, he can, but that's not what I want him to choose. That should not be the range of his choice. I don't want my son to have a choice to be a predator animal. I don't want, how do I guarantee that? You have a court in a community as few as 120 people, 240 people. You have law enforcers guaranteed. It'll be rare, remote, that these other areas should be violated. So what does God want? How should our choices manifest themselves? We read in the Talmud and the Gemara that if a person does a mitzvah for the sake of God, which is known as Lishma, it has a special value. One does it with an ulterior motive for selfish reasons, although it has value, but the value is minimized. No one starts at the most advanced level. We all start at the lesser level with a personal interest, with the ulterior motive. God says, this is the range of choice I want. How do you behave? You behave like a Jew. Qualitatively speaking, that's a lifetime's work, and that's what we try to ascend to and try to achieve.